424 once again with NASCAR 08. And in this episode of our season with Dave Freeman's Double Zero Burger King Toyota Camry, we are going to be completing race 36 of 36, which is going to take place at Homestead Miami Speedway for the Ford 400. In the last episode, we raced at Phoenix International Raceway, and we got to the lead rather quickly. We got to the lead before pit stops even began, and then we led practically all afterwards. I mean, except for maybe one lap because that's what happens during pit stops. This is going to be the final race of the season. Homestead could be rather challenging. I don't know. We don't have the best car out of all the other ones that they give us to choose from. At the same time, that hasn't stopped me from winning, I guess, like 16 or 17 races in this entire season. Let's go and see if we can add one more to that. And also, this video is brought to you by NASCAR on MDK because whenever I did my Let's Play of NASCAR 09, we finished that off with a collab where um, he was guest commentating on that video, or co-commentating, guest commentating, whatever the hell it's called. I don't know. Let's get to the track. Jamie McMurray has a track record here with the 2981, and our medallion task for this track is to finish in first place. So if we do that, we're going to have gotten three medallions in a row. Robbie Gordon's going to be starting on the pole next to Tony Stewart. Our teammate Michael Waltrip will start in third, so if I don't win this race, it would be nice to see him win it. Hopefully Dale Jarrett's up here somewhere to make up for his or will finish in the last episode. John Wood fourth, Ryan Newman fifth, Elliot Sadler sixth, Clint Boyer seventh. There's Dale Jarrett, eighth place. That's on the outside. How about this time, whenever you start on the outside, you don't lose 18 positions. Mike Wallace ninth, and JJ Yilly's gonna round out the top 10. There is Matt Kenseth, the driver that will not be winning this championship. I have this one locked up. It's a 183 point lead, which cannot be made up within one race. And uh, you can look at the rest of this stuff. So we've kept John Wood from winning a race all season long, and this is his last chance. He ain't getting a chance. I'll dump him if I if that's what it's going to take. Heck, I would have dumped him in every single freaking race on purpose. For no reason. Because when it comes to John Wood, he is the reason to be dumped. He just is. Tony Stewart takes the lead, apparently, immediately as soon as the race starts. And then Robbie Gordon got it back. I don't know. I'm looking at the ticker, and it's like the map says something else. Three wide into turn one as soon as the race starts. Uh, uh, okay, Reed Sorensen. That was an interesting move. That was scary. I'm going to try to get to the inside. Yeah, this car is actually rather tight here. So, is this going to be an actual challenging race? I would love that. It would be a great end to the LP. I don't think it was that challenging whenever we did it with Mastro 9. We won, but it wasn't that difficult to win. I just remember having to push my way up front and took the lead with, like, I think two laps to go. Now Michael Waltrip's in the lead, enjoying how this is turning out. My car won't turn, so we're going to have to crash into Joe Nemechek. I, I have no choices. I'm letting off the gas, but my car is not turning. Uh, this car, all season long, not promoting clean racing. Why is everybody slowing down the back stretch? Okay, letting off. My rewind is full. I haven't used rewind at all during this season. I could have if I wanted to, but I never actually set a rule that that I couldn't use one of the game's features. I remember I didn't use it in NASCAR 15 whenever I did that um, Race Now series. I think it's in NASCAR 2011, the game, but I haven't used it in there either. I think I used it in the NASCAR PSP Race Now series um, at Chicagoland. Yeah, I remember that. I need to start using it more because um, then I'm not playing 100% of the game. Yeah, I should make that a rule. If we have the option to rewind anytime I do something stupid, I can undo my stupidity and act like it didn't even happen. Because, yeah, I'm so arrogant. I could use a rewind function because I'm a bitch. I don't know. Ah, uh, I'm going to miss this paint scheme. I'm not going to miss driving with freaking AI that are not challenging me whatsoever. Right now they're challenging me a bit, but that's only the um, bad car setup. I like the paint scheme, but the car, it sucks here and there. I don't like things that suck. Well, JC, but you suck. You, you saying you don't love yourself? No. My car does not want to ever start turning. We're going 139. I still can't get the car to start turning. I mean, it's to the point where the car is just rubbing up against Paul Menard. It won't get off Paul Menard because of the stupid physics. Okay, will you turn now? Please, please turn now. Oh my goodness. Well, made it to the top half of the field. Michael Waltrip's still in the lead. 
scared of me even attempting to pass people now because every time I try to pass someone going into a corner, the car is like, no, I can't start turning. I don't know what, what turning is. It says you can have it your way, but my way is turning and my car don't want to turn. So that's what contradicting perfectly. Once again, they're slowing down in the front stretch. They did in the back stretch, I think, like on the second lap of the race, and now they're doing it again. I don't know why. It won't start turning. It won't start turning. Oh my goodness, Scott Riggs. That was a poorly designed, a poorly timed decision. I don't know what the hell that was. That defied physics. Uh, this game's existence defies physics. Like whenever I put the disc in the console, it has a spasm. Then that defies physics because it's an inanimate object. But like, what the frick, man? This, this whole freaking CD case. The whole damn thing. It's just defying physics. Dale Jarrett is in 17th. And, well, not, well... Not 17th. I'm, I can't count correctly. He wasn't 15th, now he's falling into 16th. I said 17th because I was thinking in the opposite direction. Mike Walter doesn't have a lead anymore. Instead, it's a battle between Tony Stewart and Casey Kane. I don't think we've seen Casey Kane lead all season. Maybe we've had. I know I've seen Elliot Sadler up here a few times. Okay, let me slow down. I'm slowing down, but it's not getting to the inside. I see Dale Jarrett behind. We're actually helping him get past Clint Boyer. Here they go again, slowing down off the corner and in the stretches. I don't understand what that could keep doing that for. Uh, it's kind of an advantage for us. It's the only time where it's actually easy to make a pass whenever they do something like that. My car refuses to start turning right now. I had to pause for a bit because someone was in the background talking and it was getting on my nerves. But that's out of the way. Also, while I was at the pause screen, I made a really good thumbnail. Also, the directional pad doesn't work anymore. What the fuck, stupid game. That didn't make any sense. I mean... Yeah, you gotta use the analog sticks to look around the car, even at the pause screen it still works for some reason. But I unpause the game, and because I used the right analog stick all of a sudden it's like, uh, um, you're not gonna be able to turn your car anymore. <laughs> that, that's so stupid. AJ Allen, that was all your fault. You see me passing, you see me with my momentum, and then you just go driving down into me. That's like a, a new Carl Edwards right there. This car still won't turn, nothing's changed since I paused the game. So that sucks. I mean, it would have been nice if I had paused the game and the car just magically decided that it was going to start turning. I'm throwing into the corner, and it's still like, no, you can't throw me. I'm going to throw myself to the outside wall. A Burger King is not siding with me tonight. Also, this is um, a night race that looks much different compared to what it looked like in NASCAR 09. I don't know, I think it was a night race in that game, or maybe it was like a morning race, but in this one it looks very different. I'm having a very hard time getting this car to turn right now, much harder than it was at the beginning. See, now it's tight and loose. If it's not tight, then it's loose, and if it's not loose, then it's tight. It's kind of like a, I don't even know what the hell is going on right now situation. There's Elliot Sadler in a Siemens car. I don't recall the last time I saw him driving that car this entire season. Someone please let me know the last time we actually saw him in that car. So, Michael Waltrip still in the top five. There's John Wood. You are not going to accomplish anything in this last race of the season. Please turn the car. Please. Please, baby, please. Thank you. Now I'm on the apron. Wow, we're already like halfway through this race. We're going to be heading down pit road. I don't know how easy that's going to be. They're actually taking the access entry of pit road. That's, that sucks. I want to do the same thing because I want to be um, doing stuff like the AI do it. I don't know if I can do that. I might spin the car or my car might get tight. I don't know if it's going to be a loose or tight whenever I try taking that entry. But yeah, all three of these guys are about to go down here. I can see the way they're all lining up and stuff. And they're probably doing it so early just because they have a really different entrance fit row with this track in particular. I don't know why. Did like the driver still take this entry to pit road or no? I don't remember. Okay, let's see what we can do. Slow the car down, slow the car down. Okay, I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I, I, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm doing I. Hello? Anybody there? Car? Okay. And don't speed in pit road. Okay, that was a really good pit road entry. We had to go swinging back and forth in the access entry because my car couldn't handle that very much. These AI made it look like a piece of cake, though. Um, there's no real throttle control in this game, but we're going to take four tires, full tank of fuel. We're not going to do any repairs to the car, though I probably should have. I don't know if I actually took any damage in that first half of the race. At least not anything significant. 
Michael Waltrip is still in the lead right now. I think he's staying out because we're losing a lot of time on him. And we have the eighth fastest lap. I think once we're all on our own, we'll be able to run faster laps. Okay, so I guess Michael Waltrip is about to come down pit road. Okay, this is not going to be any easier than the other one was, was it? <laughs> I'm, I'm drifting off pit road. I'm actually catching up to these guys now. And there we go. We're on the track. I did it. I did AI shit. Denny Hamlin's in the lead right now as he's taking his pit stop. I guess he had the, uh, the furthest pit box on the pit road this race. Um, I'm assuming that Michael Waltrips was behind his because he's not in the lead anymore. I remember Michael Waltrip was in front of me in one race when we pitted at the same time. And now we're passing all these guys are getting back on the track. The AI are shooting forward and doing that stupid rubber banding crap that I don't like. So winning this race might not happen. We've got seven laps to go. John Wood is in the lead. And it's so freaking split up. Somebody passed John Wood. Robbie Gordon. Yeah, yeah, you can get your freaking third win of the season, I think. I think he's won like two races already. Yeah, don't don't let John Wood win this race. It's bad enough that me regulating myself with the shit that these stupid AI do at this track could possibly keep me from winning the race. One lap to go in this Let's Play, and I have not been able to gain on these AI whatsoever, which is the work of the rubber banding that this game has. I think the way it works is if you drive slower, they drive even slower than you, but if you try driving faster, then they can go even faster than you could possibly ever make your car go. I don't know how it works, but yeah, I've just been sitting right around like four and a half seconds and five seconds behind. I don't know how on earth I could have possibly won this race, to be honest. I think I still wouldn't have won this race even if I had taken a really great entry to pit road because of that stupid rubber banding. I would have liked to have had a caution so that I actually had the chance. They'd be right in front of me and they wouldn't drive as fast, which is just stupid, but that didn't happen either. Robbie Gordon started in first place, finished in first place, led 11 laps in this race, so yeah, he really dominated this one. I'm seeing some really interesting camera angles in the background that I could probably make a thumbnail out of, but I'm gonna stick with the one that I got at the pause screen because that was like frozen, perfect shot and everything. Casey Kane started 13th, finished in second, led four laps. John Wood started fourth, finished in third. He thought he was going to lead a lap. He thought he was going to win this race, but he didn't. Fuck you, John Wood. Piece of trash. Tony Stewart started second, finished in fourth, led one lap in this race. So that's nice to see. I could have led a lap in this race, but I didn't. My car was really tight, and, well, then they just got that rubber banding nonsense. We started 43rd, finished in fifth. Brian Vickers started 34th and finished in sixth. Jamie McMurray started 40th and finished in seventh. Clint Boyer started seventh, finished in eighth. Uh, Ryan Newman started fifth and finished in ninth. Martin Trex Jr. started 18th, finished in 10th. What about my teammates? Yeah, Michael Waltrip started third. He was running really well until pit stops happened, and then he wound up finishing in 12th. He led five laps in this race, so that's a bright side of things. What about Dale Jarrett? Dale Jarrett started eighth, finished in 20th. This is like the same freaking thing that happened at Phoenix, except not as bad. But this is the last race of the season, so yeah, this is actually worse than Phoenix, no matter what it is. Uh, well, where did Dale and our junior finish? I didn't, I don't even remember. He didn't finish in front of him. I think Dale Jarrett just passed Dale and our junior in the points. I think it might have just happened. Where's Dale and our junior? 29th. Yes. Yes, I, I think that Dale Jarrett's going to pass Dale and our junior points. That's so nice. Please tell me that just happened. And, uh, yeah, there are the um, race results. Also, we're going to go see ourselves in victory lane. That is such a great camera angle. I am going to stick with the one at the pause screen. I promise. I think. <laughs> really good camera angles. Okay, victory lane. Victory lane. We won the championship, yes! I'm such a great driver. I'm so talented. I won a championship even though I didn't have to put in any effort. Yeah! Dale Earnhardt Jr. finished nine positions behind Dale Jarrett. And after that race, he gained a position on him in the point standings. Sometimes, I, I, I just, I don't know what to expect. That's, um, 
That's some points nonsense. Dale Jarrett is still a better driver than Dale Earnhardt Jr. He accomplished way more in his entire career. You know it. You stupid game. You're such a lying piece of junk. You, you take no justice to my NASCAR 8 LPD. But yeah, there's the final gap we had over Matt Kids in the championship. 217 points in front of him. And then there's the rest. Robbie Gordon got third. Tony Stewart fourth. Mark Martin fifth. Michael Waldrop almost had a finish in the top five in point standings, but he got a top ten. That's unrealistic enough. Ken Schrader seventh, John Wood eighth, Kyle Busch ninth, Jeff Green tenth, Jimmy Johnson eleventh, and Ryan Newman twelfth, of course, with this ridiculous points gap that I don't even know how it came to be. Uh, and you guys can look through the rest of the final point standings. Martin Trex Jr., a driver who won the championship in 2017. Uh, seven years before that, he was in 21st in the point standings goes to show that DEI did not give him the equipment that he needed to perform well. I would know I had to race with it in Astro 6 with a very revolutionary LP. Thanks for watching this Let's Play that we did with Dave Rudiman's Double Zero Burger King Toyota Camry and Domino's Toyota Camry. I'm sure that it wasn't that memorable to begin with, but we had a few memorable races like the Daytona 500 that I won for the first time in probably a year or more on this channel. And not even that, it was, you know, it was a really close finish with my favorite driver, Tony Stewart. And then we had an unforgettable shit show at Chicagoland. That's the biggest shit show on this entire channel. So this LP did bring us some interesting moments that are going to be left in the 2018 montage at the end of this year. And we just started this year. we got a lot more stuff coming. With, like, NASCAR Daytona LP begins on Monday with Mark Martin as number six by Agriford. That's an LP to look forward to. It's going to be more entertaining overall than this LP was, but I doubt it's going to have as many memorable moments as, you know, the Daytona 500 or Chicagoland shit show. See you next time. That's that, and episode over.